Hello and welcome to highlights from match day five of the Barclays FA Women's Super League. The last set of fixtures before the early season break served up a mouth-watering selection of top quality encounters. Here's what's coming up. The Gunners face Everton at Meadow Park, seeking to extend their lead at the top of the WSL table. United welcome City in their first Manchester derby of the season. Spurs took on Brighton, looking to keep the pressure on their North London rival at the top of the table. The Gunners have won 12 of their last 13 FA Women's Super League games, collecting 11 clean sheets and scoring 39 goals in the process. The visitors Everton may have lost their opening two matches of the campaign, but back-to-back -back wins over Birmingham and Reading have given Willie Kirkside renewed hope of staging an upset against the three times WSL champions. Watching this one at Meadow Park was Ben Andrews. Four Arsenal changes today with BT and Valti absent. Catley and Mead have dropped to the bench. Ruben Moy comes into defence and three new signings get what is for all of them a rare start. Nikita Paris in attack, Mane Iwabuchi and the American international Tobin Heath for whom this is a full debut at WSL level. For Everton, one alteration from the starting 11 in last weekend's win. It comes in the absence of Claire Emsley. And the teenage Swede, Hannah Benison, the club's new record signing, comes in to start, helping her compatriot and the guard in the attack in support of Tony Duggan, whose record against the Gunners is absolutely fantastic. Mark. Oh, what a ball that is. Good first touch. With no finishing touch from Nikita Paris, would have been a fantastic Arsenal goal. What a pass to find it. Arsenal's top scorer. Trying to turn provider. Frustrated look there of a forward who knows what a wonderful opportunity that was. And she did the hard bit, the control. It's well controlled by her as well. X Factor against Everton. Need him up. A good effort, Parry. Heath onto the rebound here. The guy has been busy already. More about where she put that and the fact she saved the Frieda Marnham shot. You'd expect the save, but good to keep it well wide of the target. Crossing towards Miedemar. I'm hoping to get back to that really dominant start they had. First five or ten minutes, she felt like the goal was inevitable. And so, until perhaps now, Marlon with the cross is dangerous. Surely, Miedema, oh, what a block that is. Little tries to keep the attack alive. Driven goalwards, it's still not cleared. It should be now by Benison. Katie McCabe. Involved in most things Arsenal have done here. Marnham with the cross. The clearance could have gone anywhere, but what a block it was from George. Marnham. Williamson with the cross. McCabe worth the hit. It's a brilliant hit. How about that? Left back, left wing, doesn't matter. That's three scoring games in a row for Katie McCabe, and that is the pick of the bunch. What a finish, what a finish, 1-0 Arsenal. Outrageous, logged half volley. And McIver is beaten. It was Bucci. That's awkward. It was off George, it was cleared by Seveka. And Miedemar was waiting if either had got it wrong. Good delivery, should be two it is, Ruben Moy squeezes it over the line. And the league leaders have daylight. It's a great corner, begging to have someone on the end of it. And the unlikely source of a goal is Lotta Ruben Moy. Just her third goal all time in this division and her first of this season. 
energy from Arsenal at the back might be less noticeable than their energy going forward but what it has meant is that Everton haven't had a moment in and around the edge of the box really to set themselves for a shot or a cross maybe here Christensen that's the first time it's happened it's a brilliant ball in Duggan's missed it Zinsberger either missed it or let it go that's a chance in first half stoppage time and they might not get many can't believe nobody's made contact with this Decent effort, well parried by McIver, nearly fell for Miedema. McCabe smashed it from a tight angle and the follow-up is blocked by Meyer, that's a brave bit of defending. That was the effort by Tobin Heath, it's definitely on target wasn't it? And then shortly afterwards a blast from a tight angle. McIver would have felt that from McCabe. What a fantastic pass that is to Mead. She wants her goal, she might get it. And she nearly did get it. It's a really strong hit. Anything less central than that, and I'm sure it would have been 3-0. McIver saving with her feet. It's another great diagonal ball, isn't it, from Mead and Mark. Good touch from Mead. Firm strike, just too central, really. Mead. Nobs in the middle. company now oh, deflects off there nearly deflected in McIver nearly wrong footed it took a huge chunk of Aurora Galley on the way through you have to be nearly perfect to win this division Chelsea champions last year with 18 wins out of 22 games three draws one defeat and they won the league by two points with a record that good Marnham. Oh, it's a wonderful goal! Arsenal's third, it's taken a long time to come. And we've seen a couple of belters here either side of the Wigan Moy short range header. What a strike this is! Bang! Unstoppable. It's been a good scoring week. One against Barcelona that won't have felt that great in a 4 1 defeat. That will feel wonderful, and so it should. That is stunning. Lanced off the Arsenal head. And there will be no more. Back to winning ways after the defeat in Barcelona. And staying perfect in the WSL. It's a commanding win this for Arsenal. Another shutout victory. 3-0, the final score. If you're going to lose, you want to lose to some quality. Like Frida's goal at the end there is no, it's, it's, it's hard to have to stop that. Although at social we could have probably done better. I thought those last periods of the game where we where we did well, we were, we were happy with lots of the performance. But there's a few things that we need to we need to improve. I think I think we show certain badges in the league too much respect. That is absolutely brilliant. Chelsea have blown Manchester United away. Sometimes your eyes need to be opened so you can see the solutions. It's a wonderful goal. It's another significant setback for City. A five-star showing from the Gunners. We're in a difficult moment, but we'll, we'll keep fighting. Manchester United have never beaten their neighbours, Manchester City, in the FA Women's Super League. But they came into this meeting in good form, having won six of their last seven WSL games. City, by contrast, were on their longest ever losing run in the competition, having failed to win since the opening weekend of the season. Commentary for this one comes from Rachel Brown Finnis and Robin Cowan. One change from the side that beat Birmingham last weekend for Manchester United. Lucy Staniforth dropped to the bench. Kirsty Hansen, who scored in the two all draw against City here last season, starts. Eva Mannion comes up against her former club after making the switch from United in the summer. Ella Toon is also a former Blue. Expects her to be a big influence on this United team. She's had the most shots, the most shots on target, and most touches in the opposition area this season. Two changes to the City team that lost to West Ham. 
both come in the forward line. Georgia Stanway starts at right back, so Janine Becky is pushed forward. Ellen White drops to the bench. Khadija Bunny Shaw leads the line. She's City's top scorer this season with four in all competitions. Still significant absences, particularly in defence, with Ellie Roebuck, Steph Horton, Lucy Bronze and Esme Morgan all out with injury. of the game. So many England internationals for Serena Wiegmann, who we can see in our picture now, for her to be choosing from. Chester Derby, another enthralling encounter between United and City in the 
end. The teams have to share the points full time. Manchester United 2, Manchester City 2. I thought it was a yellow card. Um, I'd need to see it again. I'd need to see it again. I'm hearing it was a little bit high, potentially, which probably made the decision for the referee a little bit easier. When you look at the players over there that we've got missing, I thought the, the girls did amazing today in that respect. They warned me about Manchester derbies. We get our noses in front with a bit of creation, a little bit of magic from Alessia, and then we give away that goal to get them, let them back into it. I feel we could have been better on that. Hope Powell's Brighton started the season positively with wins in their opening two matches, but recent defeats to Aston Villa and Chelsea had seen them slip to mid-table going into this encounter. Their opponents, Tottenham, by contrast, were enjoying their best ever start to a top-flight campaign, level with their North London rivals, Arsenal, at the top of the table. Watching this one was Nigel Adderley. Tottenham looking for five successive wins to start the season. Williams with a heavy challenge. Simpkins the victim. And it's a yellow card for Rachel Williams. Graham. And it comes causing some problems. And it comes out to Neville. And that's a fine save from Walsh. Now Dan Carter. Initially in behind Bartrip. And Carter allowed to continue. Now she needs some support. Kagman off the crossbar. Brighton, now the stronger side. Here is Lee. Boivisto, and it breaks back to Lee. And the South Korean gives Brighton the lead. Zadorski's clearance. Dispatched firmly by Lee. Sadorski winning the header. But here is Whelan. Neville comes across to make the challenge. Now she's given the ball away to Carter. And she's hit the crossbar as well. Williams. Leaping into the challenge, and she could be in some trouble here, Rachel Williams. Did she lead with the arm? It's a second yellow card, and Rachel Williams has been dismissed. Simmons with the corner. Here is Vicky Williams, 2-0. And Spurs' is winning streak. Could be coming to an end. The corner allowed to travel a long way and it was poked in by Williams. Now Graham chasing into the penalty area and it's still kicked Graham. And Spurs have a goal back right at the end. And even with 10 players, they are back in the game. Kick Graham scoring yet again in the WSL this season. When, when a team goes down to 10, I think everybody thinks it's easy. Sometimes psychologically that can become a little bit more challenging. Um, hence the, the, the quick goal they scored, you know, putting themselves back in it 2-1. But I think the most important thing is that we won the game. You know, this is a hurdle and that's all it is. You know, it's football. You don't win every single game, very rarely anyway. And so ultimately it's our job to just make sure that we get ourselves in a position where we're doing the things that we want to do well from a performance perspective on Wednesday. That's the focus for us. Having lost all four of their WSL matches so far, newly promoted Leicester faced a daunting trip to champions Chelsea. Kirsty Lavelle producing one of many fine stops to keep the scores level at half-time. As expected though, the host dominated possession and cranked up the pressure after the break. Jess Sigsworth doing brilliantly to clear Magdalene Eriksson's deflected header off the goal line. Chelsea continued to press and when Frank Kirby found space down the left, her cross was met by Sam Kerr whose header was brilliantly saved by Lavelle. On the 82nd minute, though, the champions eventually made the breakthrough. Jesse Fleming cutting back the substitute Vanilla Hala to slot home.
deep into injury time and the tie was finally settled. Harder flicking on to Kerr before Kirby was played in to double Chelsea's lead. A milestone for Emma Hayes. This was her 100th WSL win as a manager. I thought it was a tired performance from us. We didn't do enough in the first half. We didn't do enough to to stretch their lines, to you know work them side to side. I felt the spaces were there, but we didn't do well enough at it. Reading had only managed six shots on target in their first four WSL games this season, but they got off to the perfect start when Amelie Eichland lifted the ball over Villa keeper Hannah Hampton to open the scoring after just 16 minutes. Moments later, Deanne Rose latched onto a long through ball and after getting the better of Villa defender Anita Asante, laid it off to Eichland. Her pass then found Rachel Rowe, whose ferocious strike got the better of Hampton at her near post to double Reading's lead. After failing to fashion any chances of note, Villa were punished deep into first half injury time. Natasha Dowie striking a brilliant third from Deanne Rose's through ball. A much needed first win of the season for Kelly Chambers Reading. We've had a tough start to the season, whether that obviously results, but also the games that we've and the teams that we've come up against. And we knew today that we needed to get something and um, and kind of set our stall out and up the girls. The girls were fantastic today. West Ham had conceded just three goals to Birmingham's 11 in their four league matches this season, but it was the visitors who had the best chance of an uneventful first half. Jade Pennock putting wide from Rebecca Holloway's cross. Into the second half and a through ball from Sissoko found Claudia Walker who managed to hold off Gemma Lawley before unleashing a fierce strike to open the scoring for West Ham. But Birmingham levelled on the 67th minute from a set piece, Harriet Scott's header hitting the bar before Blues skipper Louise Quinn tapped in from a yard out to earn City their first point of the season. Confirmation of the results from match day five of the Barclays FA Women's Super League and it was honours even in the first Manchester derby of the season. Ellen White rescuing a point for Gareth Taylor's side. Late goals from Harder and Kirby secured all three points for Chelsea. Brighton ended Tottenham's perfect start to the season with a 2-1 home win. Three first half goals gave Kelly Chambers Reading a much needed first victory of the campaign. League leaders Arsenal continued their perfect start with a comfortable victory over a disjointed Everton. And Birmingham picked up their first point of the season to deny West Ham a third successive WSL win. After five rounds of fixtures, this is how the table now looks. And it's Arsenal who continue to lead the way. Three points above second place Chelsea, who move above Tottenham following their defeat to Brighton. Man United sit fourth, while City remain in the bottom half with just the one win so far. Reading, Birmingham and Leicester still make up the bottom three. The Foxes now the only side yet to gain a point in this campaign. That's it for another weekend of action for the Barclays FA Women's Super League. We'll be back in November for continued coverage of what is promising to be the biggest and most competitive season so far.